Finally, PWR is on the air. Damian Nelson, the man they call Meathead, delayed 68 minutes for that game, which I think is quite funny that Denver won. Why is it funny? Because all this crap between WWE and the Denver Nuggets. You know what, uh, Damian, if you go ahead and, uh, by the way, I'm the man they call Meathead, uh, for those that don't know. I already introduced you. Go. We only have 52 minutes, 50 now, because of this dang-on game. Damian, if you go to the... um, video that we have, uh, some of the comments underneath it have mentioned that Damian was wrong on this one. The owner of the Nuggets also owns the Pepsi Center in Denver, so it was completely his fault. Completely. He doesn't make every decision. This is it's the Pro Wrestling building. Report on 540 ESPN. Coming up tonight, we still have a complete rundown of TNA Sacrifice. We're going to talk about WWE Raw that just went off the air a little while ago. We're going to go in-depth on The Miz. we got Beat the Meat, the VI3, this week in history. And uh, big news on some returns and debuts, a debut on TNA this week, including the news desk. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are all over the world and here on 540 ESPN in southeastern Wisconsin. You can join us on the phone lines at number 276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. Again, that's 276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. We are streaming live not only at ESPNMilwaukee.com but also at PWRshow.com where the Chatmosphere Shadow is fear. live, where you can join us and talk right along with us here on this program. Thank you so much for your patience to all of you who waited through that game to be a part you of know, the Damian, Report they, tonight. They've been blown up in the channel sphere about how they don't want to you know, watch the game, how they love the XBA and how it's going to fail after a year. And now you're a mark for the XBA. Talking about the XBA, that was referenced by Vince McMahon on Raw tonight, Meathead. Let's talk about the Raw that was, which was surrounded by just a bunch of crap. And what I mean by that is all this Nuggets versus Lakers versus WWE versus Pepsi Center versus Staples Center, all this just bull basically surrounding uh, this event this week. Vince McMahon, who, remember, I thought he got kicked in the head or something and was injured. I guess not. Well, yeah. Well, he's back and uh, does just, quite frankly, a blow-off, just self-gratifying segment to open the show uh, with the owner of the Nuggets, uh, at least someone playing him, and talks someone about playing the, the no, no, Someone playing the commissioner of basketball, Daniel Stern, and it's David Stern, by the way. Someone playing the, I, I got it, Daniel. Dragon. Oh, no, no, I, I said Daniel. Someone playing Jack Nicholson. Someone playing the uh, owner of the Lakers, Jerry West, Doctor, excuse me, Dr. Jerry Buss. You know, again, who cares? It was stupid. Rosie Donald was more entertaining. John Cena finally confronts The Miz. Legacy attacks. Batista saves. Big Show attacks. Lawler saves. You know what I'm really getting tired of on both WWE and TNA programming, more so WWE, is you can always tell what the main event match is going to be by, by the who first works thing that happens yeah. in, the, in, the, in the first part of the show. And maybe that's smart. Maybe that's the way it should be. But as we were watching this, we knew it was going to be the five-man, but... I mean, it was just so ten man. Scripted. By the way, the ten man exactly. It was just so scripted, though. But the big return of the night. Uh, oh no, no, wait. The, what was his start name? Start the stopwatch because who knows how long this return will oh, last. Oh, stop! His name was Mister. Got to pull the mic away. Now you wait, Kennedy. Oh, now you wait, Kennedy. Uh, his quote to Orton was, "You look kind of surprised." <laughs> He was put in that big 10-man main event for uh, Raw tonight. I mean, you know what, Bill Meathead? It wasn't a good match. The whole premise behind it was a joke. I mean, the introductions, the jerseys. <sighs> it was the WWE's version of the NWA playoffs. I thought it was goofy and silly. I'm sorry if you disagree, but J.R. and Cole and Santino really coming off as a dud. 
I'm aware, coming off as a dud, uh, George Costanza reference, coming off as a dud uh, with this promo tonight. I mean, I'm aware, I'm aware. Raw missed on on several points, um, but uh, they, you know, you gotta give them credit. They were in turmoil, having to change the venue and change so much over the course of the week. I can see how this Raw may not have been as good as maybe it was going to be initially. But be that as it may, when we come back, we're going to talk about the pay-per-view from last night, TNA Sacrifice. We've got notes from the show. We're going to go to your comments from the PWR forum, and we've got the poll results as to which pay-per-view was the better of the two this month from WWE or TNA. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We're live Monday night, May 25th, Memorial Day, Meathead. Obviously, we'd like to pay honor to all of our servicemen and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country here on this Memorial Day. Thank you, and thank you for joining us all over the world here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com, and, of course, PWRShow.com. You can join us by the phone lines at 276-ESPN here in southeastern Wisconsin or all over the world at 1-800-990-ESPN. We've also got the Chatmosphere, our live chat room at PWRShow.com, which you can join us in, and we'll go to some of those comments in just a minute. But, Meathead, let's talk about the TNA pay-per-view from last night's Sacrifice. If you haven't had a chance, check out the video wrap-up and review of the show available at PWRShow.com, recorded just after the show went off the air last night. But let's give it match by match. Of course, in the main event, you had a, well, the, it's here's, a the, here's the confusing problem. Yeah, Damian, what the hell was going on there? You would think the person that gets the pinfall gets the title. Well, yes. Explain it away. I'll try to explain it away as best as TNA did, which they didn't do until during the match, where today kept alluding to, Whoever got the pin, or whoever got pinned, would have to sacrifice whatever they were uh, had you know put into the match. And at that point, it started becoming sort of obvious. It's like, wait a minute, that means they don't win the title. They just don't. They just have to sacrifice what they're. Somebody they loses sense. something. They should in have the said match. that from the get go. Yeah, somebody loses something in the match, not somebody can win something in the match. Yeah, well, Sting pins Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle has to give up. You know, the, that was the least significant thing of any four in the match. Had to give up his Godfathership of the main event mafia. Sort of dumb, really. But here's what they did good last night at TNA Sacrifice. They perpetuated storylines and developed new twists in storylines, which, if you look back at the Judgment Day wrap-up, that's what I said was missing from Judgment Day. Nothing happened story-wise. TNA did a good job of advancing stories on Sacrifice last night on pay-per-view Sting wins that main event matchup. Mick Foley still the TNA champion, quite frankly. You know, with all due respect, Mick, there is no reason for you to be TNA World Heavyweight Champion. With all the great talent on that roster, to yeah. have him as champion, I, I don't, it's I don't a big understand. name with the belt, yeah. but I think it should have been a one-month pop, and that's it. I don't understand what he's doing with the belt. What is Boy, the, his purpose? What do you mean? You're, I'm feeding off of your comment, and I'm going along with it. What is the purpose for Mick Foley to be the world heavyweight champion? I think it would have made a lot more sense for um, yeah, maybe a Jarrett to walk out with the, somebody else to walk out with the strap on uh, uh, last night at TNA Sacrifice. But, uh, you know, that was obviously the big main event matchup. A couple of other match results before we go to your phone calls, your comments from the forum, and your live comments in the chatmosphere. Uh, the opening matchup, which was a six-man tag team match added late in the week. A solid opener, continuing the trend of good opening wrestling matches from TNA. Eric Young, Jay Lethal, and Consequences Creed win in what I thought was a solid opener. And then it was the Monsters Ball match, Daphne versus Taylor Wilde. Meathead, I talked last week about how much potential this match had. In the about five minutes that it went, it delivered crap. It delivered nothing. However, it appears the reason this match was set up was to set up and continue the story between Abyss, Dr. Stevie, Lauren, Daphne, and Taylor Wilde now, and a new diva, I'm sorry, knockout, to be debuting this week on TNA Impact, which Uh-oh. we'll talk about in the later on. I was going to say, yeah, can I do it now? Whoop, no. Whoop, 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 whoop. no, 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 I'm not saying who oh, it the, is. Oh, the siren. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spoiler. Just remember, we're going to mention who it is later in the program. When you put Monster's Ball... The title of Monsters Ball in a matchup, you got to deliver something similar to the Monsters Balls we've Either seen Either Monsters in the past. or Balls. 
Balls Mahoney, perhaps. We did not see anything worth this being called Monsters Ball in this matchup. However, what this match did do was move the story. And that's what was important, I think, especially given the news we'll give you later on. The X Division Championship was on the line as Daniels took on suicide. Well, hmm. Daniels won the match due to outside interference by the Motor City Machine Guns. But Suicide won the match because they asked for five more minutes, and it wasn't five more minutes. It was a bonus match, according to Mike Tanay. So Daniels was technically defending his X Division championship in for that about bonus five minutes matchup, which Suicide didn't win because they went for the count, the cover. Uh, Suicide was going for the cover. Or Daniels, I don't even remember who was going for the cover, but the two count happened as the time ran out. So sec, uh, su- uh, Suicide still the X Division champion. And if that sounds confusing, folks, it's because it was. The match itself didn't deliver nearly what I expected it to, and the crowd was dead during this matchup. This, they were not into it. We've long said these TNA crowds for pay-per-views are pretty much their core crowd in Orlando, Florida. You don't have more uh, as many of the tourists as you do for the impact tapings as you do on these pay-per-views, and they were dead. They were but still, deflated for this uh, But still in Orlando, you're going to end up having more tourists than you're going to have at the TNA pay-per-view in any other city but yeah, Orlando. True. Because Orlando, they're going there specifically for the wrestling. The ones that are showing up in Orlando could be people, just stragglers from outside. More on this later, but Don West got annoying in this matchup. Keep in mind, I'll say more on that later. Uh, Awesome Kong versus Angelina Love for the Knockouts Championship. Just about what I expected in this matchup. Typical face-chasing heel match. Angelina Love actually pulling out the victory after spraying hairspray in the face of Awesome Kong for the win. Kong then had Tex Love after the match with two implant busters. Uh, Which Don of, West said, not those implants. Uh, speaking of implants, it did look like Kong might have popped out for a little she bit, didn't. but nobody made a big enough deal about it, so I must be off. The final matchup in the Team 3D tournament, Beer Money versus the British Invasion. Good match, very well paced. Uh, here's the one thing about this match, and I, I've been thinking it for a couple weeks, and now I'm ready to say it. This Rob Terry is painfully bad. He's the muscle man, the third man out. He... I don't know if I've ever seen somebody move as bad as he moves. And he's done uh, not crap. very much. Yeah. He's done not very much in the ring as it pertains to what we've seen on TNA. But this guy's got he's, – he's just a big muscle standing there. And that, that's it. That's the only reason he's there. Yeah, did you – I don't think he's Latin. Well, possibly. But have you seen – uh, British. The No Limit Soldiers, how little they moved when they were in WCW? Of course I didn't. I didn't watch WCW. You know, you call yourself a broadcast journalist. I am, but I only, there was only so much time, and at the time I was assigned to World Wrestling Entertainment. You prick. Yeah. AJ Styles versus Booker T for the Legends title. It was an I Quit match. I will preface this by saying I really don't like I Quit matches. Great start to the match. Uh, near excellent, actually, was the start. Until Charmel entered the ringside area, and then we did, I don't even understand this. Jenna Maraska throws in the towel. For who? Booker T, apparently. Because she's with the Mafia, but I, this one, it, it's Arnold Scotland and, and Bob Backlund and the Iron Sheik type scenario as we see the white towel thrown in by Jenna Maraska. Wait, this was in Orlando, right? You didn't see Bob Backlund picking up garbage anywhere? No. Uh, this match was good until the ending. I, I just it, it certainly could have had a better ending. But me had overall notes for the pay-per-view. It felt like an impact. And it did so only because they were in the Impact environment. As a matter of fact, during part of the first match, they showed the Impact graphic up on the big video board behind the, behind the wall. Um, but, and again, solid open with a good build for the backsta- uh, and backstory for the main event. Uh, Don West. Don West was fantastic at Doing sacrifice. what? Selling stuff? No, he was fantastic at heel commentary. He channeled, who I think, is the best color analyst in the history of professional wrestling, that Bobby, that being Bobby the Brain Heenan. Don West was as good, as good as Bobby Heenan last night at Sacrifice. I don't know what happened. I think he spent the last month watching old tapes of Heenan and Monsoon from 1992. You know, it's but funny Don because Damien, was the we, true standout star of this pay-per-view. Damien, you and I have been watching old videos on YouTube of uh, Heenan and Monsoon. And, you know, I've been watching old Heenan promos when he was running around with Flair and Hennig and uh, Andre the Giant was suspended and not suspended. Uh, Don West, um, he must care about what's going on. Oh, he's always cared. He's always had the passion. He was simply fantastic 
at Sacrifice. Again, I say he got a little annoying during the Suicide Daniels match because he was playing up the whole Daniels is suicide still, and this is some hack playing suicide, so Daniels can win the Exhibition Championship. I mean, it got just got old for about you know, 15, 17 minutes that that went. But overall, uh, this guy, uh, he something happened. Something happened last night at Sacrifice, and let's find out what you guys think. Let's go now to the phone lines. We've got on line one, Jamie from Rochester, New York. You're on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Let's talk about TNA Sacrifice last night on pay-per-view. Um, I think it was okay. 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 I think he owe me a Coke. The good and the bad. Best thing about it, the worst thing about it. The good thing about it is what you said earlier about extending the um, storylines. And the bad thing about it, it was recorded in the impact zone. Well, you know, Damien has said on this very program that he doesn't order pay-per-views usually anymore well, when they're didn't. not in Orlando. I mean, when they're in Orlando. And by the way, I have a quick question to ask you. Are you a fan of Frank Costantino? <laughs> have you He's signed okay. up? He's okay. Have you signed up for Frank Costantino? <laughs> I really don't hear too much from him. But Anyways, uh, what, was the worst, what was the worst? worst part? The worst part was the main event. I did not get it. Um, I thought Mick Foley should have lost. I mean, he, he, he had no reason to be in champion no more. No disrespect to him. But I think that Kurt Angle should have walked away with the title. Jamie from Rochester, two interesting points. Reference TNA Sacrifice on pay-per-view last night. Thanks for calling in. Let's continue on the phone lines of which you can be a part. The number 276 ESPN in southeastern Wisconsin or 1-800-990-ESPN all over the world. Let's go to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Alex, you're on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, what's up, Alex? Is this your first time uh, calling? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, a couple of thoughts about the pay-per-view last night. I thought it was all right. Uh, the opener was good. Um, the tag team uh, finals was all right. The only thing that I wasn't expecting was uh, Sting to, to pin Kurt Angle. Uh, I was expect I was expecting Foley to retain the title, um, or by uh, or beating uh, Jeff Jarrett. Um, but but one of the things I wanted to to say, uh, spoiler alert. Whoop, whoop, boy, whoop, 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 um, I'll I'll drop initials, but I was so you guys can talk about this later. But somebody that uh, debuted SD at the tapings tonight. Um, I think he would be a good fit for the main event mafia since he is a former world champion. Oh, that's a good point. Um, just, I want you guys' thoughts on uh, that person uh, when you guys do talk about it. Uh, what you guys think about him being in the main event mafia? Uh, I think he, I think his uh, on character persona fits perfectly with the mafia, and then also uh, what you guys think about the other two uh, that it supposedly are going to debut. Uh, this Thursday or next Thursday yeah, we'll, on Impact. We'll talk what, about what all guys... three of those names. We've got a new knockout and two returning world champions on TNA Impact this Thursday. We'll talk about that when we get down to that point in the show later on. Alex, thank you for calling from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, good points about TNA Sacrifice. Let's go to the PWR forum at pwrshow.com. And user named One Man Dynasty said, reference TNA Sacrifice. I enjoyed Sacrifice. It was a great pay-per-view. I thought Judgment Day was good. Sacrifice was a much better pay-per-view. The whole show was great. Yeah, the finishes were questionable, but that can't take away from the show. Also, I got to say, Don West was tremendous tonight. The best TNA pay-per-view since Turning Point. They should have a strong build for Slammiversary, and that should be great as well. Well done, TNA. You delivered tonight. Can't wait to Wednesday when it comes out in the U.K. so I can watch it again. User named Hitman Mark says that... uh, I want to say that Sacrifice was a way better pay-per-view than Judgment Day or Backlash. Overall, better than WWE because it made me and everyone I watched with care, whereas the WWE shows, we really don't care. Interesting point there, Meathead. That's an amazing point because, you know what, uh, we get that feeling a lot from people. And uh, for those that haven't watched the counseling session that's kind of floating around on the interweb right now, uh, WWE Mark Counseling, but, you know, a lot of people um, are not caring about what's going on with WWE. Let's uh, continue with a couple of comments on the forum, and then we'll go to the chat atmosphere at pwrshow.com. Uh, next person is uh, username uh, Big B Brown, who says, in summary, overall it was a good pay-per-view, but I still enjoyed uh, Judgment Day more. Uh, so lots of comments, Meathead, at the uh, 
forum at pwrshow.com where you can always speak out and potentially be a part of this show. And speaking of pwrshow.com, as we get ready to take a time out here, the voting. We've got the results from the voting at pwrshow.com. The, the pay per view of the month. Now, you can look at those results right now and think you know the answer, but we pulled it hours ago uh, without telling you. So we've got the actual percentages as to what you, the internet wrestling community, and the world wrestling community, Thought was the better pay-per-view this month, Sacrifice or Judgment Day. That coming up next right here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. It's got a little bit of a jive so bro kind of feel to it. Yeah, but, you know, it sounds like a dog, like one that might have been in a, a junkyard. Yeah. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We're live Monday night, May 25th, 2009. Damian Nelson, the man they call Meathead. Here live in the studio, you can join us on the phone line, 276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. Meathead, let's go to the Chatmosphere. We're talking about TNA Sacrifice before we go to the poll results from PWRShow.com. What do the fans out there in the Chatmosphere you know, listening live have to say about Sacrifice I'm gonna go to night? I'm going to go to question Edward, and he says, Comparing Don West to Bobby Heenan seems a little ridiculous. Did he watch the pay-per-view? Because a bunch of these hacks are in there right now talking sure. about it and sure. talking about how they didn't watch it. Sure. You had to watch it. You had to listen to every word. And there was a distinct style cue from Bobby Heenan used by Don West last night. That's the comparison is certainly, certainly worth making. If you go at PWRShow.com, go to the PWR Faves section, look at the videos, listen to that compilation from Heenan and Monsoon, and then listen to Don West at Sacrifice. He channeled Bobby Heenan last night. Okay. Next one, uh, question, Lap, Doggy Dog. Why does Damien keep calling it the wrong name? It's the chat. Osphere. Also, we've got a question, Radman33, saying Judgment Day was a lot better than Sacrifice. Um, no vote choose of a tie or choice of a tie because uh, B. Jart Wrestling thought it was a tie. You know, a couple of the other guys are saying that, um, you know, the WWE main event scene is pretty, uh, pretty stale right now. I mean, it's, you know, it's the same thing over and over. Also, Double X, Edgehead, Double X. Yeah, Sacrifice had so many bad parts. I was into every match at Judgment Day. So, you know, it's kind of... Back and forth, back and forth. A couple of comments from our YouTube page, uh, reference to the pay-per-view. Uh, user by the name of Big Al AWT, nothing special really happened, kind of like Judgment Day, but how is Foley still world champion? That doesn't make sense, since I thought it was a fatal four-way, but it is TNA King of All gimmicks matches. Amazing LFC Reds 44 says, Sacrifice 2009 is the best pay-per-view this month, not knowing what will happen. Agree, Don West's commentary was great. As far as WWE, we all know it's going to be a pretty boring June and July until August when Triple H comes back and challenges Orton. Let's go back to the PWR phone lines, and we've got Terry in Waukesha on line one. Gentlemen, how are we doing this evening? Excellent. Doing. Um, What's popping? A um, couple comments. Um, I enjoyed Sacrifice. I think it started slowly. I kind of got a little bit discouraged, but then it picked up. I thought the AJ Styles uh, Booker T match was good overall, except for the ending. Um, main event again had me kind of confused. I was looking at it, going, um, "What's going on?" But Judgment Day and um, a couple of the other WWE pay per views. My whole point is, I think the WWE is starting to get stale. Um, they don't do a lot with tag team wrestling anymore. The secondary titles aren't, <clears throat> excuse me, aren't uh, aren't focused on very much anymore. And everybody's tired of seeing the same, you know, ten guys on TV all the time. It's we've seen Cena versus Edge a billion times. We've seen, you know, several other guys it's like time after time after time. There's no new, no new fresh faces. Nothing to really, you know, get you. Oh, hey, I want to watch this. The, TNA, you know, they brought back Amazing Reg, which I thought was really cool because it's great to see him back in the ring again. But. I, I don't know. I just don't see, and TNA lacks a good, a really good secondary title. They're not doing much with the X Division title. The Legends title, I think, is just garbage. They should get rid of it because it doesn't mean anything. It's a nice looking belt, though. Yeah, it is. It is very much. It's got so. an X on it. But I don't know. I mean, that's just basically my opinion. I think you know, right now, wrestling main event or mainstream wrestling is just a little bit stale. It needs to be shaken. You know, it needs a shake up. So I mean. If you look at it, how many times are we going to say Orton versus Triple H? And there's no really good tag team feuds. I was watching uh, some old stuff on YouTube is uh, Jesse Ventura and Adrian Adonis versus Jim Brunzel and Greg Gagne, or you know the Road Warriors versus the Freebirds. They were that was some great tag team feuds, 
you know, the Fantastics versus the Midnight Express for the U.S. Tag Team title way back in the old NWA days. You know, that yeah, was in those days, stuff. I don't think we'll ever come back, to be honest with you. As the Dudleys referenced on Sacrifice last night, the Crockett Cup, that was all tag teams. Yeah, I remember watching the first Crockett Cup, and it was great stuff. And, you know, the Crockett Cup where uh, Isn't that something Nikita, you Koloff and, Nikita Koloff and Dusty Rhodes beat the Road Warriors, and Magnum TA came out and hugged them after Magnum got in his car accident. That was great stuff. Yep. All right. Well, Terry, thank you so much for the call. As you can tell, we're running short on time, so we will have to go on to our next caller, Absolutely, George. Guys. Thanks a lot. Yep. From Port Washington, you're on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Hey, uh, Damien. Uh, first of all, um, you love your show. Well, um, Damien's got his own show. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, me. Yeah. yeah, you better. Anyway, and George, me? welcome to the show. What do you got? Um, my thoughts about Judgment Day. I, I, um, I really didn't watch it. Sacrifice. But, um, however, looking on the results, I think it's kind of like the similar to Judgment Day. Hey, you, and Listen, George, with all due respect, you can't rate it if you didn't watch it. Uh, yeah, well, I watched um, p- parts of it. Of which uh, not, one? Not all of it. Um, and plus... Um, of which one? Of the... Uh, I'm, I watched a couple matches. Of which, on, of which one? Sacrifice or? Sacrifice. Okay. And, um, but here's my thing. I think that while I don't like Mick Foley as world champion, he's probably definitely going to lose it at the King of the Mountain, which is going to pin seven guys. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's just a, I think both pay-per-views, Judgment Day and Sacrifice, is um, just a stepping stone. Towards like a like, yeah, they're not they're not major pay per views. That's the point you're making, George. I get it. They're not major pay per views, but again, the point I made with Judgment Day: if you want my forty dollars, give me something worth forty dollars. TNA. If you want my thirty dollars, give me something worth thirty dollars. Let's go down to Nathan from San Francisco. You're on the Pro Wrestling Report. Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Nate? Hey, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. I have to say. Um, I was impressed with Sacrifice last night. It was a very great pay per view. Uh, it, it got my, you know, thirty dollars worth. And you know, Judgment Day was not very exciting to me. It's stale, boring. It's nice where I was boring. Just, you know, just just nothing to me. I'm looking forward to to uh, some anniversary. Okay, well, that means uh, obviously that you feel that you've gotten your money's worth out of watching Sacrifice, but and you paid for Judgment Day as well. Uh, no, no, I didn't watch it. I, I watched it online, stream. Okay. So, I mean, but you paid for Sacrifice, or you streamed Sacrifice as well? Uh, paid for it. Paid for it. See? There you go, Damien. There's your answer right there. Our man right here paid for Sacrifice, only streamed Judgment Day, and it says he got his money's worth out of Sacrifice. Well point, well put, rather, Nathan in San Francisco. Thank you so much for calling in. The poll, me dead, at PWRShow.com. We asked the question, which was the better pay-per-view this month? Was it WWE's Judgment Day or TNA Sacrifice? 53.5% of the internet wrestling community at PWRShow.com said TNA Sacrifice was the better pay-per-view this month. Now, me dead, this is close. 46.5% said WWE Judgment Day was better. It's almost like the percentages in the presidential election of Obama McCain. I think it was fifty two forty eight, something like that. What's that got to do with it's rep- uh, well, You the percentages suck. Thank you. are close, just like it. I was giving a point of reference for all the fans out there of how close it actually was, sort of or how much of a blowout it was. There. So, TNA sacrifice is a better pay per view this month, according to you, not us. Well, I, nah, actually, I never said. I never voted. I never did either. Yeah, maybe I won't. You know what? I I don't. I really can't. Pick one to be honest with you. I mean, I thought Sacrifice was good. I think Judgment Day gave me my money's worth, and I bought them both. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Damian Nelson, the man they call Meathead, we're live Monday night, May 25th. Just got done talking about TNA Sacrifice. Lots of uh, pretty much call uh, split right down the middle as. Uh, as uh, Bill Alfonso would say. Right down the middle, Daddy. Let's continue on with the course of this program, and let's talk about this week in history, Meathead. The year, 1962, Brian Pillman was born. 1981, this week in history, Brian Danielson 
The American Dragon was born. In With 19- a beard. In 1999, Jeff Jarrett wins the Intercontinental Championship from The Godfather. And in the year 2000, Ric Flair was stripped of the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, and it was awarded to Jeff Jarrett by Vince Russo. Let's go now to the news desk. The WWE Backlash pay-per-view will be released on DVD tomorrow. Remember that past, that pay-per-view rather was where all three championships changed hands. SmackDown and ECW will be available in their entirety on Hulu.com starting this week. Look for it on uh, like Hulu or so after the broadcast you like on the Hulu? television. Rocket Con and Shane Sewell have both been released from TNA. Rocket Con also no longer the significant other of Kurt Angle. TNA is offering a discount to fans with World Wrestling, or offered a discount, rather, to fans with World Wrestling Entertainment tickets for their weekend Colorado shows. Ticket was valid for $10 off. Angelina Love is scheduled to appear in a movie. The movie titled Good Intentions stars Leanne Rimes and Luke Perry. Angelina Love will play a stripper. Mark Merrow is getting married again. The big day is July 1st. And he was previously married to Rena Merrow, who is known as Sable, who is now married to the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. Damien? Yeah. Damien. Hulu. Uh, Hulu. I, had, I, I meant to ask you, but are you into the Hulu? Are you watching the Hulu? I've, I've looked at it on occasion. The Iron Sheik is doing stand-up comedy. He's not the only wrestler that we know that does stand-up comedy. We have had on this very program a man out doing his own stand-up act by the name of King Kong Bundy. He performed at the Comedy Store tonight in Los Angeles and was backstage at WWE Raw. You heard the music when we came out of that break. Let's uh, go on to our next next story. Coming up this Thursday on Impact, as JB talked about on Sacrifice last night, two big world champions returning and one new knockout joining the ranks of Total Nonstop Action Wrestling. Victoria. What she was known as in WWE is the new TNA knockout, expected to be brought in as part of the angle with Dr. Stevie and Abyss. Uh, she uh, had retired from WWE early this year. So Victoria, who retired, said she was done with wrestling, was going to go and looking to do some mixed martial arts stuff, meathead. Now a knockout. Money. Money, 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 money. Easier schedule and can still go do what she said that she wants to go do. Uh, Victoria, one of the pure wrestlers of the Divas in WWE, should be a good addition. How to did the she knockout. get brought into WWF? Do you remember? She was a part of the whole train. Thank That's you. True. And we talked about the Godfather in the history. I know. Segment. Good tie in there. Godfather, who runs a strip club in Vegas. By He's the way. a real pimp. He puts powder on his hand. Where is Curryhead? Raven. The next big name returning to TNA, he was last in TNA in early 2008. He's been working in indie promotions and trying to open up a wrestling school in Georgia since then. Quote the Raven Nevermore, back in TNA, a former world champion, certainly a pivotal part of the early days of TNA. Uh, I would say that his later days in TNA were were, were just not worthwhile at all. He's a former TNA world heavyweight champion. Indeed, I I actually think... uh, he held the NWA title, one of the last people to hold the NWA title in TNA when they were still using Correct. that title. Uh, but Raven back, and uh, Raven's always been a uh, pretty well-liked superstar in the wrestling world. Now back on uh, TNA, the, uh, coming up this week, we don't know in what role as TNA is taping Impact tonight, tomorrow, and Wednesday for the next month down in Orlando at Universal Studios. But, Mita, your thoughts on Raven returning to a TNA ring, the six-sided ring? Let me ask if he's uh, lost any weight. I hope so. Because he Raven was portly by the time uh, he Raven left. was pretty big. Actually, you know, Raven was looking pretty sloppy in his uh, final run in WWE. You know, I think uh, you know he's got good psychology. He's got great psychology. He can perform. Uh, you know, I had the. Uh, I finally got my hands on and watched because I heard we were in it. The Jeff Jarrett DVD. Is that going to make us more TNA marks for inadvertently being included in the DVD without even knowing it? You're already a Backstreet Boy mark, a TNA mark, and a WWE mark, giving counseling on WWE markism. So that was a parody. It was a satirical thing. Um, but uh, you know, there's a lot of good matches, a lot of history of TNA in that DVD, the Jeff Jarrett uh, King of the Mountain DVD. We've got the other name of the big return on Impact when we come back. 
from this time out here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Meathead, we're in overtime this week. Thank you to 540 ESPN for giving us a little bit of extra time in consideration of the uh, very long NBA game tonight. Damian Nelson, the man they call Meathead, you can listen to us live here on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com, and com. Just before we take that time out, Meathead, we we're going to give the third name of the returning Ironically, superstar that on music TNA that was Impact, playing. Shane Douglas. The Dean franchise. Doug- Dean Douglas or the Shane Douglas? The franchise, Shane Douglas. You know, as soon as I heard this, I thought back to when he was doing backstage interviewing for TNA, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it was but, bad. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just it's like, that's Shane Douglas. I know. Why was he doing No, no, no. It was bad. Because Shane Douglas should be wrestling. He should be calling out Ric Flair on every pay-per-view. He's been recently working with NWA. He was last in TNA in late 2007. Whoa, Ice Cube and Dr. Dre? No, the National Wrestling Alliance, the oldest governing body of professional wrestling. Ah. Uh, with Shane Douglas back, apparently he comes back. Uh, this is a spoiler alert. <laughs> for Impact this Thursday, attacking Daniels uh, for apparently no reason, but I'm sure it'll be explained in the Impact taping. Now, again, keep in mind they're taping a whole month's worth in three days, so some of this could have been taped out of order but at least at some point in the next couple of weeks, we'll see Shane Douglas make his return to TNA Wrestling. Your thoughts, meet it. I was about to yawn, only because if he doesn't really get into, you know, really wrestling back like the franchise should, and, you know, the franchise isn't a young, you know, pup anymore. He's a grizzled, cagey veteran, and it, you can't go out to every pay-per-view like you did in ECW and call out Ric Flair. You know, that's all... Really, that's all he was known for is being the ECW heavyweight champion and calling out Rick, you know, calling out Ric Flair. He also read the uh, led the Revolution in WCW, and it was supposed to be part of the Radicals, but it wasn't. With a Z. Yeah, Radicals with a Z. Cause that's what makes that makes scary. it tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the Hardy Boys. Uh, yeah, that and coloring your goatee. Those are the three big names, Shane Douglas, Raven, and Victoria, are going to be on TNA Impact over the course of the next few weeks. Meathead, beat the meat. In front of you? Are you kidding me? All right. Beat the meat. Um, last week's question, Damien, if you recall, was about Jimmy Hart. The name of his band. The answer uh, was? Come on, you don't remember? The Gentries. The Gentries. What was their song? Uh-huh. uh-huh. That wasn't the question. Uh-huh. But I ask you, what was their song? I object. Hey, what was Jimmy Hart's favorite line in the interview that we did with him? What never did he leave with? Never trust Why? Small fingers, small hands. You never know where he's been. Oh. All right. Are you ready? We're talking TNA, right? And we're talking big surprise, you know, appearances in TNA. Here's your question for Beat the Meat. When Big Van Vader made a surprise appearance for TNA in 2003, who did he save from a beatdown? This is in WCW. You didn't even listen to the damn question. It's because I was writing it down because I know when we tape TV. When we're Big Van Vader made a surprise appearance. Again. Hard for the people to hear when I'm trying to repeat the well, question. Well, then don't ask me a question. Okay, Golden Girls reference. Blanche and Dorothy were this after is where the you same tune out. And uh, Dorothy went out with them, and Blanche was upset. She said, Dorothy, I think you owe me an explanation. It's the, the, Dorothy got two words out of her mouth, and Blanche said, I don't know what we're yelling about. <laughs> And done. Beat the meat. Blanche big... did not say that. She said, Dorothy, I don't have to stand here and listen to this. When Big Van Vader... <laughs> I have a... Obviously, we're after midnight here on uh, Central. When Big Van Vader made a surprise appearance for TNA in 2003, who did he save from a beatdown? Okay. Did you hear WCW anywhere in that question? Did you? Did you? In the atmosphere, somebody said... Chad Oldsphere. Somebody said, who could be less deserving of a four-disc DVD than Jeff Jarrett? Listen, I, if you've not seen it... Have you not seen the Braden Walker four-disc DVD set? <laughs> if you've not seen it, I don't think you can knock it. This DVD is the first TNA DVD, by the way, I own. And uh, I'm going to go out and buy a couple more now because it was very well done. It was distinctly different from the way WWE puts their DVDs together. Like, they would tell a bit of a story, then go to a match, which was fairly random then go back to the rest of the story. It actually flowed pretty well, and it was good to see the historical nature of TNA, which I think a lot of fans might benefit from. 
just as much as you benefit from seeing some of the old WWE stuff. But uh, this is a good opportunity. They've got the history of TNA year one out. That's actually the next thing I'm going to purchase just so I can get more familiar. But uh, I, I was I too thought four DVDs was a little when you bunch. purchase that uh, history of TNA year one, maybe you can figure out who the answer to beat the meat is. And how do you submit those answers? Uh, that's comments at pwrshow.com. Comments at pwrshow.com. And we'll announce the person who got the answer to that question correct next week right here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. And remember, at pwrshow.com, you can go ahead and win PWR reward points. We pay you cash, $25 a month, cold hard cash. The person who scores uh, the most points meeting the point threshold first and uh, that is only at pwrshow.com. Most sites charge for news. Charge for all kinds of stuff. VIPs. This only available to subscribers. All that crap. We don't do that. Hell, even Macho Man did site. that. And uh, you can go to pwrshow.com to get more information about PWR Rewards. We'll be announcing next week who got the prize for the first month. I also want to make sure you check out the latest edition of the Pro Wrestling Report at milwaukeewrestling.com each and every week. Great Lakes Championship Wrestling returns June 12th to the Italian Community Center. The card has been updated substantially. That is available at blizzardbrawl.com. And as Meathead alluded to earlier, make sure you check out the latest videos from the Pro Wrestling Report, including Mm -hmm. a very special satirical edition of the Pro Wrestling Mm -hmm. Report. Also, the hottest wrestling video on the web right right now. now. And also, uh, as you talk about the Italian Community Center, it's possible Frank Cosentino may be there because he's Italian and he knows people. And if you haven't been on a Facebook, Pro Wrestling Report PWR is on Facebook. Also, be a, fran- be a fan of Frank Costantino, would you? Damien, this is where you take over. Let's go to the VI3. Each week we pick the top three in professional wrestling. One female, one male, one tag team. Meathead, go. Uh, my female is going to be Victoria. My male is going to be Shane Douglas. And there's no way to work in a tag team for... The other returning superstars, so we'll just call it hmm, Beer Money, Inc. Because they are the new number one contenders. Beer Money! I did it already. Pay attention and to the, the program. I've got, I'm, I'm busy. Let's You're goofing off over there. I'm not there. goofing off. I'm talking to the peeps, making sure I... Sh- you should be talking to them with Shut a up! microphone. Now that's where Dragon should have been paying attention and dropping the Ron Burgundy. The definitive VI3, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the one all of you tuned in to listen to this week. My top spot, as far as a male goes, Don West. Keep in mind, my tag team spot last week was Mike Tanan, Don West. Don West. I'm I don't okay. know where I, he got it from. I'm not arguing Where it was hiding. You. Don West, standout star this week in professional I'm not wrestling, arguing according to me. You. The female spot goes to Angelina Love. My pie sexy, her pie sexy. And you don't even know what a pie sexy is. Poop, 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 poop. I understand it's after Midnight Central here, but don't you do it. And the tag team spot goes to Horn Dust. Horn Dust? Horn Dust. The tag team of Horn Swoggle and Gold Dust. Horn Dust. Yeah. This week on the Pro Wrestling Report Television, PWR Primetime, we ran out of time this week, so we'll go in-depth on The Miz this Wednesday night oh, no. at PWR Prime, on PWR Primetime. Oh, no. In addition to that, we've got the two-minute drill, the news desk, and, uh, Damien, what's coming up next week? Q&A. We've got all kinds of your questions <laughs> and comments week. and concerns and a big Pimp interview it. with Booker T. Pimp Booker it. T on the Pro Wrestling Report this week, PWR Primetime. That can be seen Fridays on Channel 14 right after WWE SmackDown in southeastern Wisconsin. And also Wednesdays at PWRShow.com Pimp uh, early. Pimp it. And will you stop Please, I'm trying to make a point here, and you're just obnoxiously interjecting Booker T on top of the Abyss interview from last week. Uh, I'm sorry, not Abyss, but uh, you got me all turned around and flustered here. Just watch the show. (laughs) June 3rd. June 3rd, Damien. Daniel. What's coming up June 3rd? It's time to shake things up again. The PWR draft, the 2009 PWR draft. Uh, I just, the producer just told me, Dragon just told me talking to the mic. When I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, I'm not going to blow out the, the amplifiers and the microphones and such. This is a $10,000 microphone. June 3rd, PWR 2009 draft. Meathead this year, 15 names. 15 names each. 
That's what we pick for our fictitious organizations. Hmm. PWR draft. Hmm. More details on PWR. So you're about to go 0 and 3. More details on PWR <laughs> prime time this week. If you're doing nothing else this week, make sure you check out all the videos we have to offer at PWRshow.com and uh, go ahead and drag this show along with you all over the place on iTunes. Also now on Yard Barker and uh, WrestlingClips.com uh-huh. and uh, you name it, uh, we are uh, streaming Can you or get broadcasting. Can you for a wrestling report? I mean, is, are they available on the same site? I, I just can't. I can't anymore. <laughs> I, I feel bad. Damien's got allergies. His, his shirt's all bedazzled on the back. He's all thrown off because he keeps leaning into a bedazzle. I want to thank everybody for your patience in joining us this <laughs> evening. And your patience in... Is that a white Rodman? Who is that guy? J.R. Smith, it looks like? Focus. Get us out. Um, <laughs> for your patience in uh, the, the, the delay of game here tonight with the uh, NBA Finals, we'll be back with you next Monday night. Thank you for tuning in to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN. For the man they call Meathead, the Kaz, wherever he may be, this Where is Damian world, Nelson saying so long, and thanks for tuning in here on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. We are your-